The rail's out again, so it must be time for March Makes. See you in a bit. Hello, hello, hello. My name's Sam and you're watching my channel So That Sparkle with Sam. And today we're going to have a look at what I made in the month of March. It's going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour today. So strap yourself in, get yourself a cuppa and we'll go through what I made in March. So one of the first things that I made in March was the fringe dress. Now the fringe dress is by Chalk and Notch. This is one here and I'll pop some pictures up so you can see me wearing it. Um, absolutely beautiful dress. I absolutely love it. I did have to make a few alterations to the pattern for me. Um, instead of doing a full bust adjustment, what I did was I left the darts out at the back. That left me with a little bit more room up front. And I found that that was all I needed to do. So um, by doing that, it meant that I didn't have to do a bust adjustment, but um, it kind of fits me. And um, because it's got the waist ties, it does pull it all in really nicely. Um, so I believe I made the size 10 um, and just left the bust darts out. I will be making it again and I'm going to be making it in a different fabric this time. I love the loose flowy um, viscose fabric, um, viscose twill, which I got from the Beyond the Pink Door subscription box. Um, but yeah, next time I'm definitely going to try and make it with a bit more of a structured fabric because I think I'm going to really like that look. Now, I'm not going to go into loads and loads of details of the patterns that I've made today. So if you want to find out any information, I'm going to leave the, li leave the links to all the patterns down below. So you've got, if you fancy, just go down below, click on the link and it'll tell you everything you need to know. So the next thing I made in March was this, which is the Orla top from the dressmaker's closet. Um, I forgot the name of it. There's so many different oh, <laughs> tops around at the moment that, um, yeah, this is the Orla top from dressmaker's closet. And this is an absolutely beautiful um, top blouse to make. And if you are thinking of putting yourself up for the So April blouse, this April, it would be a great one. Sadly, I made this in March, not in April, so I can't enter this. Um, but you know what? I might make another one because I absolutely love it. So this was um, a little bit of a thought that I was going to do this as um, my So Yellow for Endo entry. But as it was, I ended up entering something else instead. Um, so yeah, but I absolutely love it. The fabric was from Sew Me Something, quite a few quite a few months ago actually that I bought it and didn't quite know what to do with it and then when this pattern came up I thought yep that's for me I made a straight size 12 and made no adjustments just straight size 12 um yeah I did put some extra stitches in um to hold the facing down because I do find that it does it is a little bit of a, a flappy facing but a few extra stitches and it was fine. So the next makes that I made was actually, I made two of the same pattern. So it, these lovely, one of my lovely subscribers actually recommended this pattern to me and it's a free pattern. So it was one of my entries for So Frugal. Um, and it's the Swoon Scarf Neck Cardigan. Now on the hanger, so I have to say, these don't look like much, but on, they do look really lovely and they do give that lovely waterfall effect. And then this lovely kind of princess line seam here does give it really nice shaping on. I think my favourite one is this one in the um, So Hayley Jane subscription box knit. Not quite sure what composition it is, but it does have a really nice kind of soft drapey feel to it. Um, and then this one, cheapest chips from the um, from Pound Fabrics, which I've got quite a lot of this left. So um, I just wanted to make something with it to see how it kind of draped, and it's it's beautiful. So yeah, couple of cardies, and in coming into spring, 
cardigans in the UK, as far as I'm concerned, are an absolute must. <laughs> Another one quite early on in March was the wide leg pants from Peppermint magazine. Now, I absolutely loved making these and I love wearing them as well. Um, yeah, and um, these were another one of my entries from the for the So Frugal. And yeah, I just, when I first got, I'm going to be really honest with you now, when I first got the fabric for my Beyond the Pink Door subscription box, I got the other colourway, I got the white one. And my lovely friend Karen said, I got you, I know you're not going to like the white. And she swapped with this colour for me, which was just so lovely, um, because I just knew I wasn't going to wear the white one. Um, and I've always quite fancied myself a pair of Larry trousers, you know? Who doesn't like a pair of Larry trousers? Um, and as soon as I saw the fabric, I thought, right, let's make a pair of Larry trousers. So I went for the wide leg trousers. Um, I did have to do a couple of alterations, but then even though I've altered it, I think actually what I might do is go back and unalter my alterations because I was worried I... I was kind of, I put myself as a size D and that fitted my hips perfectly, but not my waist. Now my waist is a little bit bigger um, and also like depending on what day, time, second it is, my waist does fluctuate quite a lot. So I was, I did then alter it out um, to the bigger size on the waistband to kind of give me that extra room um but actually i found i found that i, I didn't really need to do that and next time i do it I, I won't change the waistband band at all i will just make the back darts um i'll either not put them in at all or take a little bit out of the back darts and then that will give me i think plenty of room because these fit absolutely fine um, if anything, the extra bit that I put in the waistband makes the waistband flare out a bit and almost gives me a little bit more around the middle than I've actually got. Does that make sense? So I think next time I'm just going to do straight hut size D and just believe in myself and go for it. But the thing that I like most about these is the little label that I popped in the pockets so that, you know, you can just see because I would never put a label... Um, in the back in a pair of trousers or a pair of jeans or anything like that because th that would really annoy me and really frustrate me so if I were, was going to put a label on I'd put it on the back band somewhere but on the outside so it wasn't kind of flapping around as it were so yeah absolutely fab pair of trousers I really really enjoyed making those and I can't wait to make them in different fabrics I have to say, Peppermint Magazine, wide leg pants, for a free pattern, there it's phenomenal. And if you haven't kind of downloaded this and got this in your pattern stash, you definitely should, because as a kind of basic trouser pattern, um, I think it's perfect. Um, and if, you, if the wide leg isn't you, you could always alter the leg. Um, but I think the way that they fit is pretty bang on. So it's a good one. The next, not necessarily in the right order this, because I, I think I've got, I think I'm going a bit out of order now. <laughs> but another thing that I made in March is a little t-shirt. So again, it's the Closet Core, core t-shirt, an oldie but a goodie. Um, I just love this t-shirt. It's my go-to if I want a nice, loungy, lazy Sunday t-shirt. This is the one I got. I had a little remnant that I got from Carolyn Rose. Um, I absolutely believed that this was non-directional, <laughs> but I was wrong. So I've got cherries the right way up on the front and cherries the wrong way around on the back. Do I care? No, I do not. It is a t-shirt. So, you know, all the fun of the fair. Um, now, if you have watched any of my other vlogs, you will have seen me talk about this one a lot. This was a self-drafted top that I made. Um, in a piece of fabric that I'd got gifted to me from one of my lovely subscribers, Mandy. And yeah, and I just added some binding, and made myself a little top. So I won't go into detail because I've already talked about that a lot. 
The next thing I made was a, another free pattern and they are the Mountain Pose Pants. And now you can have two different types of waistbands. You can have this crossover waistband, which I absolutely will make, but I just tried it in the normal waistband to begin with, um, just to see the fit. And actually the fit around my waist, hips and bottom is bang on. Unfortunately, the hips are right in, my, in the leg, the fit around the leg is not quite right for me. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but it comes in a lot of the knee and then flares out. And I don't know whether it's because I'm a shorty and perhaps my knee, my knee isn't in the right place. <laughs> you know, it's not quite, um, it's, it's feeling really tight around that area. So I'm, next time I do it, I'm going to get my other pair of yoga pants out and just kind of flare it out that way because I, for me, it, it, it wasn't quite working. Now I could do one of two things. I can live with it, it's fine, it's not the end of the world. Or I could cut them off and make them short ones for running. Um, and then, yeah, but I think I'm just gonna live with them, live with them for now because there is quite a lot of stretch in this. It's an active wear fabric, so I think it might kind of stretch out and be fine. The best thing about this is the little label. So I used Vicky from The Sewing Bee has released some new labels. She's got some fabric coming out soon, and I believe she's got some buttons as well. And it says, you got this. And you know, in a pair of exercise trousers, a little label that says, you got this. It's what you need, isn't it? So yeah, so if you haven't checked out, this is a free pattern. I definitely would. It's, um, it is a good one. As I said, you, the main thing with a pair of leggings is you fit around your waist, your hips and your bottom. Um, the rest is very easy to deal with, um, but I find that the, the waist and hips is the hardest. So the rest I can deal with. So I'm definitely gonna have a, another go at that pattern, but just perhaps try and, um, try and get that, that leg fit just so. The other thing that I made was another So Frugal make. Now the reason this isn't on a hanger is it's all ready to go to my sister for her birthday. So I'll pop pictures up so you can see it on my mannequin, but I made her a robe. I used a mismatch of a couple of free patterns because unfortunately I was intending to use the Sew Magazine pattern um for the no pattern dressing gown but unfortunately the sew magazine when i wanted to make it the sew magazine website was down and i've checked it a couple of times and it's still down so i don't know whether they're having some kind of problems with it but it just won't let you log in and while you can get some of the dimensions without logging in you can't get all of the dimensions without logging in so i kind of made it up as i went along but it did the trick and i made it work so yeah so that was cool and then the next one is a bit of a sewing fail. Well, I don't like the word sewing fail. Is it's still is still in a learning process. Should we call that? The next one is still in a learning process. Now, when I went to the sewing for pleasure for show, um, I bought this beautiful Norida Hansen um, cotton foil. I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> and I love it. And I, and I love the fabric to bits and I wanted to make just a really nice, simple dress. And I went for the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress, which I've made before, but I've never made it with the long sleeves. I've always made it with the short sleeves. Now I'll put a picture on here to show you. And while it's a lovely dress and I do love the dress, it's just not me. It makes me look much wider than I actually am. Um, I feel, I don't, I feel quite frumpy mum in it, you know? Um, yeah, and cause considering it's such a bright and colourful dress, it didn't, it hasn't given me the vibes that I wanted. So I don't feel that this is a finished dress as yet. I might take the sleeves off. I might make it short sleeves and see if that makes any difference. I may take the skirt off and rejig here. I did wonder whether I needed to make the bodice a bit longer. So yeah, I still need to do some work on that. Bit of a 
bit of a yeah bit of a disappointing make that one but hey ho we'll see what happens and i might come back to that another time and then if i do i'll tell you all about it so last but one make is my lovely viscose um not viscose i think it's a blend it's a uh, Dazzle Satin, it's called. And I'm pretty sure it's a Fabric Godmother. In fact, it is a Fabric Godmother fabric. But I got it from... Where did I get it from? I got it from Cloth Kits when they had a sale because it was actually quite an expensive fabric. But I managed to get 40% off, which I thought was a bit of a bargain. And I got three metres and I used every single last scrap of it making this lovely Mood Society fleur dressing gown and I love it <laughs> I love it I love it it might not be the most practical dressing gown in the world but do you know what I am super super enjoying flouncing around in it um, and it's bringing me immense joy to wear it so um, I popped on two little pieces of ribbon and on the ribbon it says made by me for me and it's little simplicity ri ribbon um, and I put that on instead of the little belt loops because, well, why not? It just felt like more me. And then I've done the same in the top here. Popped a little bit of that ribbon in. Um, so I've got a hook to hang it on. And I mean, I haven't really got much to say about this pattern. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Follow the instructions. They're very good. And you'll get what you get. Um, I went for the size medium. In fact, I think it was extra small, small, medium, large or something like that. I went on the second one anyway. I went on the second line. So yeah, and it's, and it's plenty big enough. So yeah, that was a good one. And then my last make, I have to unhook to get it off my, uh, rail is and again if you watched my stitch festival vlog you will have already seen this but i made myself a harrelson bag to go to the stitch festival and i love it i use this little bit of um scrap that i had left over from a bit of fabric that i got in a so Haley jane box and then i used in the lining the last scraps of my little shell top that i made for myself and then inside is the stars lining. And if you've not made yourself a Harrelson bag and you like bag making, I would suggest you get yourself out there and make one because I love making these and I'm definitely going to be making more. And it's a really deceptive size bag. It looks neat, tidy, probably a bit teeny, but actually you can fit loads in there. You've got a massive pocket in the back where I managed to fit my phone and my battery pack and um, tissues and all of those kinds of things, purse. And then inside, I managed to get all sorts of gubbins inside it, keys, um, you know, and all of that. Um, yeah, perfect for a day out at the Stitch Festival. Yeah, brilliant bag. Really enjoyed that. So yeah, phew, I feel like I really whizzed through it and I absolutely did because I just wanted to kind of touch base with you all and give you a real kind of quick of what I've made in March because I've realised I love doing the March makes videos, I love doing my makes videos but because I do my Friday sews I feel like I've already told you a lot of information so the, Mar the makes videos I thought I'll just kind of do a quick overview and give you a quick idea of what I've been up to and how busy I've been. And I've been a very busy bee. I think I've made 11 items in March. As I said, all of the details will be down below. So feel free to go and have a look and search anything that you need to search for. I'll try and put the links for all of the patterns that I've used, but I'm always happy to answer questions. I'm just off now to do my April plans. So don't forget to sparkle. See you really soon. Bye for now.